Kengo Master of Bushido is a samurai style fighting game that was developed by Crave Entertainment and published by Ubisoft and released on the PS2 in December of 2000. Although the game is viewed as a spiritual successor to the Bushido Blade series released on the PlayStation 1, the Kengo series unfortunately did not receive the same praise when it hit store shelves. There isn't really a lot to this game, and I've got to say that I do have conflicting feelings on this title, as it is quite unique but shallow at the same time. Kengo Master of Bushido doesn't really have a story or campaign, nor does it have the structure of the usual fighting game featuring a roster of characters to progress through an arcade mode with. The single player mode first offers you a choice of three warriors who have their differences in speed, power and fighting style, and then gives you the opportunity to choose which dojo you would like to train under. Once you've made your choice, you'll begin taking part in tutorial lessons to show you the basics, and then you are tasked with completing all of the necessary lessons and challenges to test your skills. After completing all of the lessons of your chosen dojo, you can then challenge other schools, defeat their masters, and build your reputation, eventually gaining access to the Imperial Tournament. Along the way, you can take time out to improve your abilities, such as power, speed, agility, and stamina by training. This essentially breaks down into a selection of mini-games. These include activities such as striking a post, standing under a waterfall, chopping bamboo, blowing out candles, and no word of a lie, trying to meditate without falling asleep. Now, don't get me wrong, the idea of a fighting game that allows you to improve specific skills of your chosen character to build your fighter the way that you want is a good idea. However, these mini-games do get old pretty fast. You can also unlock new moves and create your own combos, which is a nice touch, but doesn't really save this game from its mediocrity. And that's pretty much all there is to the game. If you're not fighting, you're in a menu, so the game can feel a little empty at times. I will say that one of the positives of this title is that there is a real tension to the combat that's not seen in most games of the same genre. The controls are kept simple with only one attack button, and other than block and parry, there isn't much else your character can do other than the occasional dash across the room. Now, while the controls are kept very simple, every move that you make does matter. Depending on your stats and who you are fighting, a match could be ended in a matter of three or four hits. The combat seems to have a focus on precision and timing, as your best strategy for victory is not to rush in swinging your sword, but rather to approach your opponent cautiously and look for openings. You also have to remain on your guard, as attack animations are very heavy, meaning if you miss, you're left wide open to an attack. By taking a step back from your enemy, you can also build your stamina bar, which allows you to block attacks, but block too many without taking a second to breathe, and your defense will be useless. This makes for a challenging experience that can be rewarding when you manage to pull a fight back with only a sliver of health, and when you take two or three hits in a row, it's mostly because you know you were reckless and left yourself open. Whether you will enjoy its combat is dependent on your taste. If you're a fan of Dark Souls, then this may be your kind of thing, as it has a similar feel to how punishing it can be. The game's presentation is pretty much non-existent, with next to no dialogue or cutscenes at all, and only short and repetitive intro animations at the beginning of each battle to add a little context. This is a shame, to be honest, as I feel a little bit of extra personality is exactly what this game is missing. While I understand that this game's tone is incredibly straight-faced and serious, the lack of any characters or story just makes this game more forgettable than it already is. As I mentioned earlier, the game is unique, but feels shallow. If it wasn't for the game's steep difficulty, it could probably be completed in three or four hours. Creating a fighting game where every hit and miss matters is a good idea, and if Kengo Master of Bushido was fleshed out a little more, then it would be a solid offering, and wouldn't be a game that's only worth playing if you belong to the niche category of retro gamers who also favour Dark Souls style combat and also are a big fan of Japanese and samurai culture. It's a shame there isn't more to this game, but what there is, is occasionally enjoyable, but for the most part it's monotonous and ultimately feels like a wasted opportunity.